In this lesson, I'll show you how to graph polar equations using symmetry and the shape that these graphs form are known as Limasson curves. Before we start, there are three symmetries you need to be aware of. The first one being with respect to the polar axis, which is equivalent to the x-axis in an xy plane. To find out if it's symmetrical about the polar axis, you replace theta with negative theta. And if the equation doesn't change, the graph is symmetrical about the polar axis. The next one is symmetry with respect to theta is equal to pi over 2. In other words, the y-axis, the vertical axis. For this, you have to replace both r and theta with their negative counterparts. And if the equation doesn't change, the graph is symmetrical with respect to theta is equal to pi over 2. And finally, we have symmetry with respect to the pole. In other words, a combination of the polar and vertical axis. For this, you replace r with negative r, and if the equation doesn't change, the graph is symmetrical with respect to the pole. Let's continue with the question. Check for symmetry and then graph the polar equation. Our equation is r is equal to 1 plus cosine theta. Starting with the polar axis, I will replace theta with negative theta. So I have r is equal to 1 plus cosine negative theta. And it turns out that if you place a negative angle into cosine, the output doesn't change. Take for example, cosine of 60. It's 1 over 2. And if I take cosine of negative 60, I still get 1 over 2. So r remains the way it is. What if we replace theta with negative theta and r with negative r? Let's see what happens then. We have negative r is equal to 1 plus cosine of negative theta. Now we discovered in this test that this one still remains as r, but replacing r with negative r makes r negative. Therefore, the test here fails. And the graph is not symmetrical with respect to the line theta is equal to pi over 2. To see if it's symmetrical about the origin, I'll replace r with negative r. And as you can see, the equation changes when r is replaced with negative r. Therefore, the graph is not symmetrical with respect to the pole. So this fails as well. Now let's go ahead and find out the r values from 0 to pi. Starting with an angle of 0, our equation was 1 plus cosine at 0. Make sure that your calculator is in radians. We end up with 2. Now we'll replace that 0 with pi over 6. We get 1.86. Replacing this 6 with a 3, 1.5. Pi over 2 is 1. Now we have 2 pi over 3, that's half. 5 pi over 6, that's equal to 0 decimal 13. And finally, cosine at pi is 0. Let's plot these points. At 0 and 2, that's right here. At pi over 6, it's 1.86, which is just a little bit less than the second ring. So I'll connect these. Pi over 3 is 1.5, which is in between this ring and this ring. I'll zoom in in a moment. Pi over 2 is 1. And then 2 pi over 3 is a half, which means that in this ray, it should be right here. Notice that's in between the two rings. 5 pi over 6 is 0 decimal 13. It's going to be hard to represent in the scale that I have. And then at pi, we have 0. Now, given that it's symmetrical about the polar axis, this means that we have a symmetry along here. So if I were to put a mirror right here, it would look identical in the lower half of this polar plane. So it should look like this. And just to zoom in, the shape that you see on your screen is referred to as a lima sans curve. That being said, let's analyze this a little further. The graph of r is equal to a plus b times sine theta, or the difference of the two with sine, and a plus b cosine theta and their difference will generate these types of curves. The ratio of a over b determines its shape. Notice that if the ratio is less than 1, you'll have an inner loop. If the ratio is 1, which in our case it was, you'll have this heart shape which is also called a cardioid. When it's between 1 and 2, you have a little dimple forming, 
And if it's greater than 2, you have no dimple and no inner loop. And there you have it. That is how to graph polar equations using symmetry.